Hi, uh, Jason, this is Richard Collins with the Internet Foundation. And I'll try to keep this short. So, um, i looking at uh, IRIS, uh, which is uh, seismology and other type of data sharing. It's a global data network, if you like. And uh, they have some infrasound. Actually, they have quite a number of infrasound. And I'm trying to compare that and see how it relates to to the uh, uh, network that's used to monitor for global nuclear uh, explosions. There's a test, the test ban treaty group. Anyway, so I just picked up, uh, there's a base URL in here that I stuck in. Uh, and the only thing that changes from the two time series that I picked is um, uh, the uh, location uh, that's actually the channel number within there. So one is, there, there are six uh, detectors at this location and I just picked two of them. So I'm just, I'm doing some really trivial, simple stuff here just to, just to check out. I'm, I'm using this to teach myself MATLAB but I'm also uh, looking at um, I'm I'm good enough to multitask, so I can I can come up with dozens of different new uh, statistical approaches while I'm doing this. Anyway, so that just give you an idea. Anyway, um, so that's there. Now, what I learned was that I could just work interactively. So I get my basic stuff in here, run the sample. I don't want to keep running it because I don't want to hit their server especially if I go pull a couple of hours of data on something, I, I'll, I'll get it in here and then just keep working at, at things. Um, I'm learning to wrap the different things I'm doing in functions here as I go. So each experiment, I, I put my notes in there, I just shove it inside a function so I, I don't have to keep, um, you know, trying to memorize this stuff. So anyway, so uh, I write very fast and I, uh, I've been programming for 55 years now, so I, I uh, uh, do it, but uh, I'm just not that familiar with the syntax for um, thing. Um, this thing here drove me crazy trying to find string split. Uh, what do you call it in your, you know, this language and all. So anyway, so, all right, so I got down to here. I did, I convert, ran, um, I wanted to look at uh, scattering counts. So I, I came in, I set the dot size to 10 so I could, I could do it. Uh, because if you put 10 in here, you don't know what the heck is. You guys did the example you use SZ, which is not readable at all. So if you're going to do things like that, use real words and, and uh, not, not abbreviations. The, you know, the, the value, it does show you um, what it means, but anyway, so the having a, uh, an ability to go down here, hover that and say, this is the color, here are your choices, you might do that. So your editor can be a lot smarter on a, just on a thing like that. Um, you know, filled, what are the other options? It, you know, here it's saying filled, that's of a class of things that you might do, okay? So anyway, that's, that's just there. So here I convert them, um, there's, there are two independent time series, so there's, you know, all, there are several of them, but pairwise, I'm treating um, the two, um, uh, like SE, Cartesian, X, and, oh, this should say A and B. I, this was a draft. I, I'm jumping back and forth. So, okay, so I'm, I'm taking the, the uh, Cartesian, uh, you know, a pair of time series and I'm converting them there because what I wanted to look at was the angles. I say, you know, if they're correlated, then what will happen is that they'll be uh, there. And then I check anyway, so I'm checking them down here uh, doing this. Okay, so let's see, HAS plot histogram here. Yeah, okay, so it, I did this one. Let's redo it again. Okay, so I did that one. Um, so I'm converting uh, the two time series. The original, uh, they happen to come in here. The, uh, the, uh, the values for the zero one time series at, at 
sensor zero one and sensor two. So anyway, so convert those. Okay. So now I've got an updated AS in there. And then I was doing the histogram, this this one, so there. So it, now I've got if I open this, oops. Oh, it opened. It opened it over here. Okay, so it's it was looking at, so it, why it threw me directly in there, I don't know. Let me see if I can try that again. So let's close this, close that. Hey, that's HAS, open. Okay, now, now, so it did It did that funky thing of, you know, throwing me, I don't know where those defaults are coming from. But look, all the values are gone. Let's try it again. Let's see if I can do this. I think it's because it's tied up into the plot. Okay, so it did the plot. Uh, let's close that one. Oh, and then it erases them. So, uh, I don't know what's going on here exactly. Let's see if I can... Uh, there's normally what I would it should stay there all the values should stay so as soon as it did it's doing the histogram that HAS all the data should not disappear afterwards so that's that's here and let's try this again yeah so it was working okay I mean it actually did work uh, just to be sure let's get back to close this Close this. Let's see, everything's saved. I'm on infrasound. Let's close it. Uh, go back in. Oh, your your thing. If it has an error, it rearranges all my icons. Okay, I've done, that's happened several times. So like uh, I, you know, like it gets stuck for some reason, and I have to shut down. Like uh, uh, not not control alt delete, but I. You know, I, I kill I kill this and it says terminate the program. It does. When I restart it, it rearranges my icons on my desktop. I don't know why. Okay. All right. So let's run this again. Uh, this will just do basic statistics value one there, and then let's go ahead and stick in. Uh, I don't. I didn't check this. I'm, I'm in the middle of things. So scatter count. Let's do that one, scatter count of val zero one, val zero two. I can be, I'm pretty casual because I've done this some, you know, tens of thousands of times, these kinds of things. So it, you know, uh, uh, in so many different contexts. Okay, so uh, save that, run it. They're, they're small. Uh, time series so there should be yeah there they are okay so it did and I I would dearly love to be able to get these out here okay so it's doing my my few little things these are the A's right and um, uh, these are the, um, the the angles so what I'm saying is that the the relative you know are they are they approximately the same size? Yes, they're they tend to cluster over here, you know, at a few, uh, uh, a few angles, and uh, then the radius there. There is some, you know, the actual the weights of them. So the amplitude is not very important, but the the relative direction of them in in uh, sort of I don't have words for some of this. I do it, but I I, I don't talk to people about this very much. Okay, so let's see what we can do. So, the I've got my um, value one and two, and the what I was doing was the oh brother now okay. So what I want to do is do the histogram again. Okay, let's, that's this one. That's the eight, this one. Okay, so I want to convert them to Cartesian to there. Okay, and. To do that, I step, and I'm in the interactive. So here, I'll, I'll do the, uh, the oh A and B. Sorry, this has to be amount in this space here, this workspace of uh, zero one. Okay, there. If 
So zero one. Oh, zero two. Right. So there. So now I've got those. So I've got my A's, and I should be able to do. Uh, here's my histogram is equal to. Pick it up somewhere here. This one. Histogram is that. Okay. There. So it's generating that. I'm going to just move that to the other screen so it doesn't disappear. I, I closed it before, so that may have to do something with it. So that's the H and oh. All right, so what it did <laughs> was it did this and brought, brought up the property inspector when I, what I wanted was, let's see if I can do it again, open select. No, it's still doing that. There's The stuff is in here, the value, sh with this open, it should be okay. So um, uh, plot, uh, oops, let's see. Figure, I want to not write over it. Figure three, I'll just make it there. Um, so that should be a different one. Damn, pardon me, where'd it go? So this guy's still there. Figure three is here. And then I say plot um, h dot values. And then it want it disappears. Managing these screens is really a pain in here. Um, this is why I like to get these all all on. I keep them on my other screen where they don't disappear. But it, you know to keep them on top. So uh, so that's that's right. I mean it basically it took a bar chart which was your standard histogram and converted it into a line thing. But more than that. I, I'm, I was looking to, to do this. So I think the problem in here was the management of the layouts and things, okay, that I, uh, what I wanted to do was there. So what I did was to close the, it shouldn't, the data should not disappear if I close, if I close the plot, okay. Uh, now I know, and you've got it, they basically, the, the object should not disappear if I don't, if I'm not viewing it, do you, you know, the, so, um, where, how, uh, where is this thing? Okay. It's here. So this, this figure one H here. So I'm, I'm plotting, uh, I did this histogram H that's this guy here. I did H equals histogram of the A's, the angles from this, this, uh, simple, conversion there. So I've got the A's. I broke, I broke them in 360 pieces. And if you play games in there, then that wasn't a bad choice. I didn't know if they were going to swing um, in all directions or not. You know, it's, it's conceivable. Um, so anyway, uh, then here I plotted the value. So that this works. So I, I, I kind of answered my own thing, but, but I'm raising it to you guys there's got to be a better way to manage the layout on the screen here so that you can keep track of these. Now, this is a, tr I call this a trivial example. I'm working with just two or, you know, actually there's six detectors there. So now if I've got, I've got clusters of these. So I've got six detectors here. I've got six detectors there. I've got six detectors there. I think there are hundreds of these sites growing up now. And so each one was six. So if I, you know, and how do I uh, pull, uh, correlations don't work real well here. Not, not in the traditional sense. It's uh, way too much data. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, a human can't go in there and, and fiddle with it. You have to be uh, sort of more fundamental. So anyway, so that, let's see, that, that I can, uh, there. So I should, should be able to, I don't know. There it goes. Okay, so that's, um, not quite sure why everything gets gets edited and fiddled with. You guys have really powerful tools. I'm looking at like I start looking inside this thing here. You have more tweaks and fiddles than you can imagine, and I'm, I'm sure it's wonderful, but it's also a burden 
for new users. So you may want to have, I'm not quite sure. I'm not sure. I don't want to. Um, uh, if I go in and generate, okay, the, these guys here, I can't, um, I don't want them to come here. I want everything to come out as there. And I, I, I frankly, I'd like, I wouldn't mind either put them here or put them on my other screen and just say, always come on the top. Maybe you guys have that. But every single thing that I want to try takes maybe 10 minutes here or an hour or two hours here of searching to try to figure out what in the world did you do? Where did you put the setting for that? So it's kind of, I don't need this top line. You can throw that away. You can move this down into here somewhere. You don't, I don't need these tabs like this. This ribbon doesn't have to be there. You don't have to repeat this thing here. Uh, again, this, this business, this whole thing could go off, but I can't get rid of it easily. I can't, I can't scrunch it out of the way. See, it still leaves some in there. And I think that if I try to close this, let's see, that's the current full. See, I don't, this one, uh, it's not clear. This one doesn't report what, what it is that, Am I actually, is that actually, I guess it is the current folder because I clicked it and it highlighted, but that's not, not the, the same as having the names there. So let's see if I can just minimize. Okay. So there, all right. So the current folder is flowing over there. You guys put, use so many different strategies. I think all your groups are working independently. Don't you have like 5,000 people working there? I wonder what the programming team looks like because um, I think they're all going in, their, in different directions with so many different things. It, it, needs a, it needs a little more consistency. Now, maybe it, some of this is just me, but I, you know, uh, I'm trying to work out these kinds of problems for the entire internet. So multiply you you guys trying to take care of your 5,000 staff and I don't know, 20, 50, 100,000, a million users. I don't know how many you have, but a million is a heck of a lot less than four and a half billion. So that's, that's my, where I'm working at. And, um, uh, so, okay. So this, this works pretty well. Um, I'd like to, I don't want to see this stupid message every time. I'm sorry. It, it's, it's, you, you know, you told me once, take it away. You know, if you put a message up there, I don't need to see it a hundred thousand times or however many times I come in here. I don't know what this K means. Whoever, whoever put that in there, there. And what, what the heck is this FX thing over here? I don't need that bar. I don't need it. You know, just, just give me a plain vanilla thing. I don't need the dashes in here. Okay. Uh, I, uh, you know, I'm talking to, I'm talking to the computer here. I'm giving it instructions. You don't, you don't need to, you don't need to say I'm talking, you're talking because I, they're, um, or they're, anyway, I, uh, little things. This isn't bad, but you know, a lot of the stuff I have to go in every time and, and look for it. And, and when I open these things, uh, no, oh, that's cute. Why, why did it come down here? Oh, it put, <laughs> so, uh, why is it coming? Up? Generally it's been coming over the top of this one. Let's see, where is this? Undock, maximize, minimize. So, all right. So, uh, there, close that. Uh, it's been coming over the top of here, okay, before. Uh, now, you change this, it changed this. It Every other time, it's been, let's see if maybe going back here. Uh, see. Restore, so that's where it was. Let's close this. Open selection. Okay, it's like it has been coming here, and now it's over here. I don't know why. So you, you I, if you teach people with videos, it's going to take forever. 
uh, you know, to write, you can't make videos to cover every single thing that's going on out there. And every, if you have a, you know, this is getting to be a 20 minute video already. If you have, you know, a thousand people or a hundred thousand, I don't know how many people you guys have uh, to deal with. So uh, it's that retraining or the training for new things that I'm dealing with. There are 2 billion kids uh, from five to 21 in the, in the world right now. Those are, uh, those are the people being educated for the first time. And they're using horrible methods of memorization, and and uh, a lot of times they just, you know uh, they don't have any any uh, tools to help them uh, get through and absorb the material from the world. And there's so much of it. If you want to be a doctor, it's ten years or more of memorization. If you want to be an engineer, an electrical engineer, you want you know it's it's four or five years or eight or ten years of memorization. And even there, I see every day, I see groups, I, I see 10 or 20 or 50 groups all working on the same thing around the world, everybody doing the starting over from scratch. Okay, well, that's my own problem. So, um, uh, what, what, what was happening here, so if I, let's see, if I redo this, uh, it, no, I have to go find it. So it did put this up, and... Uh, Okay, so let's here. So, so it's plotting that, but if you close the original histogram, it doesn't work. Let's see if we can find that. Let's try. So, close this one. Uh, here's the. Oh, oh, that's an earlier one. H is still there. Let's see if I if I open it. It's cleared. Okay, it's empty now. Okay, so hey. All right, so, uh, God, I wish this was, let's see, how do I undock this, I don't think, undock it. Okay, so you see there's no values in here. H has been cleared. Okay, so I just plotted that thing. I plotted, I plotted that, and now it's erased. That's, that was the original reason I contacted you here. So I got down here, I had the, uh, hit, I did the histogram. That should not go away, okay, it's, it's data. Okay, that's that's raw data. I don't care if it's related and stuck to stuck in a, you know, and connected to uh, some kind of display object. But the the raw data, the values, the counts, the histogram, you know, the you know the the counts in each each uh, bin, those are in there. Those are the values, and I wanted to work continue to work with those even after I use the histogram as a way to generate them. So it's there. So I plotted them here, they were there. I plot them, if I plot them now, it's gonna say, un, right, okay. So the plot plot of the values there, let's do this again. So here's here's the one, let's generate it again. So just do, there's my histogram. I generate the age and I can't close this. I'm pretty sure I can't close this. I'm just gonna move it off this thing and I say, uh, plot. Oh, I, I've got it already. Plot there. Oh, I did it again. Sorry. Here it is. Plot values. So here's here's the plot. <clears throat> and the histogram. Where's my histogram? I don't want to rerun it. I want to just display it. So I open the selection and there it's gone. So, okay. So I did that. I plotted and it erases it. And uh, now uh, your display of stuff has to be independent. What's displayed on the screen has to be independent of the data. Because if I create something in my program here uh, from a histogram, it should not matter whether that's on there, or displayed, or you know, uh, removed or not. So you, uh, you're you're shoving things into into graphics objects and not keeping track of the of the data. Now, I can go and probably try to either write my own or try to find some uh, place where they uh, um, where the data itself is done. And I I would have done. Let's do this. Let's generate it again, and I'll see their histogram. Let's open this. 
I can't get back to the dog. I don't want this this property editor. I had the other one, which was which was the actual object itself. So this is the if you have the figure there. Let's try it again. Okay, so uh, let's do histogram. Okay, so it's out there. Maybe okay, it's displayed somewhere else, and then open it. No, it's still coming back to this display. You know the one that I'm trying to get to, which is the uh, the property. Okay. Oh, maybe this. No. Where is the? I want to see the fields of the H value because I, if I want to refer to anything, I had to look at that and by by chance I got it and I could see that it included a list of there. So it keeps coming back to this. So let's see what else can I do? I can't. And yeah, now somebody probably knows this, right? So there's probably one person in your in your organization who knows this, but it shouldn't. It should be here. It should be interactive. Where, uh, you know, I want to let's see. Open selection. That should have been say rename plot catalog. So let's see. H. Okay. Uh, that's fine and this is going to go to histogram generically so this is fine but this is terrible uh, to read okay somebody's back to text display here when you have this this to work so I can't get I can't get to this information that way right now it should look like that well actually it should look this is a terrible if it's a vector give me a vector display don't give me a generic table display if it's a vector and it's I would put it horizontal by default because um, I have a few thousand of these and they don't go across wise very easily so uh, let's see close them let's see open so let's see base so th there's inconsistency here and that H it says a graphics optic but it shouldn't be let's see open no, it's just there. Um, anyway, I, uh, the, it's data and there are graphics instructions. So the display of it, I think you need to separate those because these are good. Okay, somebody has to do those um, data sets in there to run the function that creates the plot. And generally, that's good stuff that's part of the analysis and tracking of what's going on why go out and recreate that in a separate data only area when you have it inside that that uh, you know uh, the routines that created the graphic object now you could keep it clean and say well um, you know uh, well I'll split them but you could also just say uh, these were these are graphics related and these are um, you know there but I could imagine using some of the graphics uh, things that some because somebody's displaying and visualizing something the um, the the codes and status and values of those intended for creating the visualization might be as important for getting to the essence of what that that thing is uh, there because somebody had to go work with that kind of data to create the visualization they understand it well they get into it they get there let me stop here this is you know gotten along um, but the you know the same thing again uh, if I do a histogram on something and then I plot the values of it the plotting the values erases the histogram okay now let me try one last thing let's see so let's go to create a histogram let's do a figure uh, eight I'll just just force it out there and then uh, plot h dot values and it's uppercase so you guys are case sensitive okay yeah. and 
I'll see if I can find it. So now I've got the plot on figure eight. I've got the, where is it? I've got the uh, histogram back here on figure one. So you can manage this, but it, that's a burden on the user. Uh, you should keep track of and not throw things away unless, you know, when you clear the workspace of it. So where, where would this one be? You could stick it in here. This one is figure eight. You might want to have, this is an object and it's got data in it. It should be in the list. So figure eight should, you know, you could keep a list of all your figures, figure one, figure two, and you could be more specific. This is a histogram figure. This is a plot figure. So, and they can each have their, if I do the property inspector for this, then I can get in and, and do. this is kind of clumsy. I don't know why. Okay. That's just, that comes up. You see, it's, it could go right next to it. And, uh, frankly, this is, I like this basic, uh, you know, a list of variables. I wish I could get back to the one that I had, which was just a straight listing of the fields, their values and their types. It didn't give the type it really ought to. So, uh, I could, I, you don't have an open source version of the display thing here. A lot of this is just, uh, you know, uh, layout and, and, um, and management and, and, um, I'll get it. I, you know, I'll, I'll make this work for me, but I'm, you know, I, you know, I, if I have to do this, I might as well let other people too, if, if they're doing this, um, I want to recommend some tools for these, you know, we've got global, I've got, Global networks out there are just exploding. And, um, you know, for the Internet Foundation, I, I set policies and standards for the whole Internet. So I tell people, you know, you need to do, you know, you need to do it this way. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Um, and part of it is, is every, all the different groups, if you, you the Python groups, the, um, you know, Astro Pi and, and the uh, thing. I, I don't I don't even keep it all in memory at once. I just I make notes and stick it out there. So that the uh, uh, this is hard. I okay that light gray on gray is hard for me. This light gray on white is hard for me to read. I know I can see it if I force myself, but I'll get I get a headache from doing it. Uh, let's close all these things here. So. Um, uh, these things here are fairly readable, but when they're not here, you see these things, uh, the icons disappear and, you know, you can grade them out in different ways. You could, you could, I'm not quite sure what, but when you just simply make it so faded, I can't even see the icon later. I'm going to see it. It's a combination glance at it and it's going to have that that icon run in advance and uh, it'll have meaning for me but if i I'm, I'm basically you're forcing me to use several symbols for one thing okay the run in advance with this gray thing the run in advance and the other one now you might not count that very much but i have to deal with uh you know what happens if a billion people look at something like that every day that's what i do almost all day long as I look at how much time is wasted. If you have a million users and they each use it several times a day, you know, and they come up here and do that, what's going to happen? This stuff here should, even though it's not used currently there. So uh, you've got a bunch of empty space out here you, for better. You, it's vertical space is very dear in here. And, um, you know, you're using it up. So, uh, this thing here, look how gray those things are. They're hard for me to read, and yet you have identically the same stuff over here. So I can bring them up, but the ones that are current, basically this is a list of the ones that I've, I've looked at recently. You could do that in some other way. So you kind of have, you know, somebody could do it, be a little bit more creative about getting this a little better. The, the the names that I use, I have to. I'm working with a lot of these are even short. I'm just doing sketches here. I'm not doing anything serious. I'm just kind of this is just a learning and, and thing. If I was doing this for a group, I would use very long names so that you know it'll say exactly what they're doing. 
I don't like doing that, but that's the way that you have to do it if you're going to talk to, you know, if I'm going to talk to 5,000 groups, you know, each group with, with a million people in it, I, I have to have that. These are good. I just love to get them out of here. So that I, it's a powerful toolkit. It's just so scattered and hard to, you know, manage the pieces of it and tying all this down so it's rigid. I can't see these things. I don't even know. I'd love to know what those other things are. It's, there's, okay, cut, copy. Look how slow, that was slow. Let's go. Okay, one, two, three. That's a that's a definite delay, and I'm on a fast machine. Now it won't go away. Um, I had, I didn't, I didn't. I was in here uh, working on a different one, right? And it uh, during debug, it came up with a value in a little box, right? Okay. And what happened is that box never went away. So there, you got a bunch of little holes in there, and I think it's because the way your your groups are working together, you know, one. Um, you, I don't know if you're doing enough testing. I don't know what the things is. Um, I can give you a little bit of feedback like this, but I, I you know, uh, um, okay. All right. Let me stop here. Um, let's see. These are cool. I, I you know, the, do you know where I'm? I'm working, let's see here. This is what the data looks like here. This is uh, 701. Oh, it didn't, there, okay, I have to read this. Uh, 0100, that's an hour's worth. Okay, so this is an hour at one of the stations. And that's station four, or that's uh, <clears throat> uh, detector four. Here's detector three. Now they're working with you know months of data or years of data, and you can you know you can't the methods that you use for a few seconds or a few hours uh, won't work if you're if you're doing that. So I have I'm trying to give them something that's fairly uniform across all that. Let's just duplicate this. Get back. So here's oh oh back there we go. So that's one. There's quite a bit different, and yet they're highly correlated. And if this was the comprehensive test, is it comprehensive test ban treaty organization test ban? Yes, yeah, C T B T O. I think it is. And they're you know they're checking for nuclear non proliferation or hopefully non proliferation. So anyway, they um, so. Uh, I would like I'd like consistency here. I'd like to say if if you if so, how many how many millions of uh, simple plots like there are on the world. I, I would like it. You know, if you guys came up with the best in the world, then that should be in the small kit of things that everybody on the internet uses. You couldn't if it's open. It would have to be open, but you could contribute some of your you know your basic things like do a plot out there for everybody on the internet and then the world will love you you may and probably if your name is out there seen four and a half billion times as you know there then they'll come and if they have a harder problem come and ask you uh wikipedia i'd love to get that fixed i'm, I'm gonna just do a little bit of advertising here wikipedia okay uh, there, let's go. Uh, I don't even, okay, so here's there. Let's just take, let's do a random article. Let's see if there's any. Okay, that, um, no, I better look, stick with it. Okay, site Wikipedia org Fourier transform or FFT. Put that in, in parentheses so it does the or. Okay. Okay. So here, uh, 
uh, FFT, 34,000, okay, okay, so they're here 34,000 times on Wikipedia that apparently that, that's mentioned, and what what's going on is every one of these, have, they come in and they do the usual thing. Some of them, you know, they got their equations, and they're, what is this? This is text. Okay, that's, that's actually an image. You can't even do anything with it. So all of those pages, every page on, the, on uh, Wikipedia, somebody puts in a nice little equation and you can't do a doggone thing with it. Okay, And it repeats again and again and again. And often they're, they're different. And many of them are, in a sense, they're wrong because they're incomplete. Uh, the notation changes, the unit... The units change, okay, and they they're all treated as different. So here, these are things here you should be able. To actually, if you're going to put, if somebody's going to get advertised on here, Fortran, you think, oh well, Fortran's just Fortran. No, it's a community of people, and when you advertise them here, the group of people that are contacted is who who grows. Okay, if you're not seen on the Wikipedia or somewhere else, uh, maybe people don't find you. So. Um, anyway, I would recommend that if you're going to do a topic like this and you get in here, um, that's a terrible, you know, terrible example. There's, you know, put in real data, r let people run the FFTs right online. Uh, there, turn these panels off if you're not using them. Turn off these headers if you're not using them. Um, uh, you know, the, you can do a lot. I've, I've, I've downloaded and rewritten uh, Wikipedia several times, at least parts of it, analyzed it a lot more so far. Because, you know, what's going on underneath? How do they build this? What, how's it go? Because it's so central in here. And one of the problems is the people who write in here, you can't tell who the author is. So, you know, the, without going through a lot of trouble, you can't say, where did this paragraph come from? where that sentence come from, okay? Um, why did they choose this one? If I go in and I take uh, any one of these, um, um, like references down here, I can go on the internet and find 10,000 others or 100,000 other ones that cover the same topics. Now, in a specialized area, sometimes you won't, but I've done this about 20,000 times to look at, you know, you know what what's what's happening with fast Fourier transform on the internet? What's happening with um, you know factor factorization or something like? That. I don't usually do one of those, but there, you know, who all is doing music on the internet? Okay, it's the, I hadn't done that one. Uh, it's not hard. Um, so anyway, let's let's get out of here. But uh, I would like you guys uh, uh, math math works is you know you're you got math in there i'd like you to contribute a um basically a an equation symbolic equation tool and a standard way of displaying these things so that this becomes interactive okay let me look at something here let's do uh maxwell's equations uh, oops i missed maxwell's I missed it. There it is. Okay. So uh, the usual thing, they, they're putting more and more words in here. People know how to write. They don't know how to write equations. So the, the, this thing here, <clears throat> these things, you they don't have the value. Okay. So here they're putting in these fundamental constants, right? And you either have to go somewhere else and all. So you can't like treat this piece in here. And it's repeated so many times on there. Let's see. Uh, let's see how many of them. the in the name will change in there. This this is kind of an obscure one for a way, but uh, site Wikipedia. Productivity. 295 times. Okay, so there is no authoritative uh, permittivity of free space or uh, 
my uh, training is in electrodynamics and gravitation. So, so there. okay, so 546 times those two. Now, the, the authority in the world right now is at NIST, or actually CODATA. And, uh, but there, if you look at their site where these things are, um, you, you're going to find that it's, it's really, uh, really rather poorly done. You can't go and refer to, let's see, I can see where, oh, oh. sorry. And there it is, NIST. Okay, so this is the authoritative place for the number on the internet at the moment. It's terrible because you can't, like, if you have to copy this out, you have to take the spaces out so it's in form. I'm trying to get them to say, look, you have to have a human computer readable thing. If somebody's browsing this and they're using, uh, you know, some programs to help them, you know, if they're, if they have, say you had Math Lab. To walk with you everywhere you went on browsing the internet and you wanted to do a count like a Fourier transform on something you find you should be able to do it right there that's that's essentially what I was doing with uh, uh, you know with those those data with these guys okay so I've, I'm here find a nice data set and I want to do some stuff well I can go back down to my Windows machine and then go out and copy these URLs and everything else but I could do in JavaScript, I do that. I've done this the same thing in JavaScript. So I go in, I'll read, I can read this data in JavaScript easier than you guys can, and then parse it faster and easier. Your, your syntax for strings is not good. You, you know numbers pretty well, but you're doing not a great job on, on strings and, and there. I have to parse the entire internet at times. You won't believe how god awful the sites are nowadays and, you know, and some of the data sets, it's a mess. Anyway, so um, what I would like to do, this this thing here is pretty standard, but you can't get, I can't get to this place and say, give me the value. Okay, there is no, you know, uh, value, uh, something like that. You know, I can't, I can't, uh, do that. pardon me. Okay. So, um, uh, and the subsidiary information is not organized. So this is what I call, uh, it's human readable only. Okay, so they're putting it out. The whole internet is paper driven. It's, they put it out there and assume humans are supposed to read it. But the transformation that's going on is that the internet is now also human machine readable, which means a human can see it and understand it and read it, but all of the machines also have to do it. And the, you know, a bunch of people have said, well, we'll tag this, so we'll put all this stuff. I, I got ways to deal with all that, but it, um, the central places on here, there, vacuum uh, permittivity is pretty large. Let's see. Okay. The electric is actually not a standard portion of that, even though NIST is doing it. It's back down to one person who makes the decision of what goes on to NIST, and the programmers and website builders can override that. So here's 3.58 3 million entries for the vacuum permittivity on the end. All of those ought to go to one central place. Now, you don't throw away what's out there because people often have better in, uh, uh, things to say about it. What I do is I take all three and a half million of these, three three point five eight million of these, and I map and index the whole of it. And then I, you know, I, I what I'd like to do is go back and say, hey, everybody, if you go, on, you know, put if when you put your authoritative value, put it in as a reference to one one place. Now the internet has you know, um, uh, data transmission problems. So you probably also have to cache it in enough secure locations that people can get to it eff effectively if they're going to refer to a central place. Now, every one of the sites that use this can cache it locally. That would be, but it has to be trans uh, uh, traceable back to the original. So 
where does this value come from? You hover in the context for this one, and you know it's on Wikipedia, and it should say it comes from here, not not by the human having to read something and search and read and search and read and search. We're wasting huge amount of time. Uh, I can tell you for any given instance of what it cost in here. Um, an hour of human time on the, in the world right now is worth about $32 an hour. That's the GDP per capita in the United States, which sets the standard and the value for time for all the people who are trying okay, or are, are working at that. There are countries that are a lot richer than the United States now, and, uh, and depending on the group, uh, very much richer. So they, uh, uh, you know, they're, it's, it's kind of in the middle of things. If people are on the internet and doing things, and they're, you know, doing, uh, somebody who has the, you know, an interest, anyway, I, I can't give you a summary of everything. So these are the kinds of things that I've been doing uh, for, actually I started, this kind of standardization I started on when I was about 20, okay, actually, or younger than that, when I first started going to colleges. So the um, uh, the thing what, that I saw was you, you read something and it says a word like this, that it has a particular value, has particular units to go with it, and it has many different equations and contexts where it's referred to. And if you put all that together, then you have a map of whatever that is, and you can begin to use it. And the people on here, all, all the people who in here have had to deal with this in many different ways. If you read the papers on this, what's the physical underlying basis of a lot of this? It gets connected to all kinds of things. So anyway, I'm, um, uh, let's see, uh, uh, what can I do? I think I've covered pretty much everything. Let's see. There, there. These are fun. I, um, I'd love to be able to go in here and have this tiny bit interactive because, like, I'll, I'll come in here and, and they'll have an outlier on that. And the thing is scaled from max to min, right? You see, there's the min, here's here the max, that's the max right there. So they scale it from max to min. If you have one spike in there, which happens sometimes from equipment or a spheric, a lightning or, you know, or an earthquake or something. And then this, this whole thing flattens down and you see just a teensy tiny little straight line on there. And uh, what you, you know, you could even window it and say, you know, give me, give me an overview picture of the whole, you know, at a big scale so I can see what the spikes look like in there. Or do a his, uh, the most usual thing I do is do a histogram of this and look at the actual value. So you see, which is why I, I'd like to combine the histogram and the data with it. So, you know, plot, you know, I did my own. I said, plot this, count the, you know, generate the histogram, plot it myself, and then you know, then when it exits, you have all the data. So pass all the data. I would just do it by default. If you call a, func a function, if you call a function here, okay, let me see if I can explain this. I, I'm throwing in the kitchen sink in here. I'm sorry. If you know, there. Okay, say I call this thing here. I'm having to, you're forcing me to, to do this, okay? I don't, you don't have to. You could just say, read one, x equals read, read one, and then just have a, basically then a properties editor and say, what do you want, okay? Do you get, get what I'm saying? Say I, you know, you don't, say you make all your functions this way. You just call them that way. And then when you get back, you say val one equals that. You should be able to say everything. So URL, text, lines, in, uh, values. Everything may, you know, every value that's created and used in there, you should be able to go and investigate it from the, from the output side. Okay. And likewise, suppose that you're going to, um, you're going to use it or you want to use it, you should be, you should look at it from the calling side or before your calling side. So you say, oh, I've got a function called read one. What's inside? Well, it gives you, you are, you know, uh, there, I couldn't pass a global in here. What a pain. In JavaScript, if I put something out here and there's functions in the same routine, I should be able to go in there. The string concatenation didn't work. I took base URL plus 
location, which is just add, you know adding it on to it, you know, conca string concatenation. It didn't work. Okay, um, so there's all kinds of little quirks and things in here that should work. Um, that there, uh, there's I don't know ex the exact number. Um, there's probably about two billion people who have some some degree of JavaScript skill out there. The, if you look at the people who call themselves developers, it's it's uh, large. It's you know big. It's the biggest group out there. If you go to GitHub and look at theirs or look at the stats on, on where people try to do that, the, the JavaScript is winning ahead of everybody else. Java is not far behind and so on. What's What's happening though is that there are many people who are users because JavaScript is so uh, there that they're in the, they end up uh, you know also picking up pieces of it. Anybody who wants to automate something, the most likely thing they're going to hit in the world right now is they're going to see JavaScript because their uh, corporate information systems are JavaScript built. You know they're basically internets um, based on HTTP and you know all the, all the usual things and because they're so it's so inefficient and, and horribly structured um, then our corporations are getting eaten alive you trying to maintain things <clears throat> and everybody going on the cloud they it's the same thing the toolkit builders are making money the the consultants are making a lot of money you know they're they say, oh, well, it stretches out forever and, you, you know, we can charge more because it's so complicated, you know, you know, I, I, you know they, they, they'll have it say, oh, well, it takes 10 years to do this. That's much better than if it only took about 10 minutes, okay? So, <clears throat> I have to look at base, <laughs> often base human motivations and corporate motivations and country motivations all the time. It's an interesting uh uh, study to look at the whole global community of something. You know. So, if I looked at uh, scatter, you know, people doing scattergrams, there's a lot of them, and they're not working together. They they have not no standards for it. Uh, you know, the thing is that they'll go to try to do that, and it's so much trouble. You kind of have to basically you need to get to the level I'm working at, and you just do the whole of it. And you say, look. If we're going to do this, here's how you get the people together, you know, and and uh, so yeah, anyway, uh, let's see what else can I say. So, all right, so I think uh, don't force people to name their uh, return values. Just send them the whole thing. Just say, here's an object called read one, you know, and it, you know you, you could. You can look at the source code, let people walk through them. I mean, why, why hide what you're doing? Especially, I find uh, like uh, a lot of the mathematical functions are wrong. Okay, you go in there and you look at how they actually calculate it, and they're not, they're, they're 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 wrong for different types of situations. I have to look at every situation, so I see that. But uh, a lot of people just do it, and then they don't. So. Uh, uh, but so exactly what's going on trace through it see what happens but here even more so if you if they're creating and using local values there's good reasons for that if there's a dependency in here like this string to double it could have mistakes in there so you ought to be able to go down and say what what do i need to do now your compiler's doing that it's looking at what is the compiler doing about 90 percent of its work is to go in and say What's what's being called in here? So I'm using WebRead. Well, what what's WebRead do, doing? You know, I don't think you guys ever collapse stuff. Okay, say you wanted to go in and you say, look, I've got to run this maximum efficiency. Well, you might you do a little bit internal to each one of these things, but take a whole uh, mat mat lab. Okay, that's that's what I was doing there. Did I show you? I might as well say I'm gonna squeeze this in here. I took all of the, I took the program files, you know, from uh, Windows, the C drive, and I counted them. I have a little uh, JavaScript routine that'll do that in about 10 seconds. So, uh, okay, PNG, you got, uh, that's the most of the thing, so that I don't have the count. It's something.
There's a bunch of onesies down here. You should you can clean that up. There's 130,000 uh, files in here. Okay, and um, 51,000 of them are PNGs, which is they're binary machine readable images, and the per it's actually intended for human eyeballs. Okay, so. Uh, you don't put an image out there for any, any right now, for the most part, for anything. PNG is lossless, so I'm using it as a lossless package for data sometimes if, you, if the groups and organizations would use it and actually document, you know, where did it come from, when was it taken, what instrument was provide, you know, did it. If you have a Hubble telescope image and you throw it in JPEG, it's a big waste because every single pixel in there is, is mushed. Okay, there's not a single pixel in many cases, except almost by random, that's identical to what it was in the original. And those are supposed to be stars and, you know, precise positions and precise spectra and things like that, and they throw it out in JPEG. Uh, PNG can't, I haven't really dug into all of that. It, it, I just can't take time for everything. It's supposed to be lossless, and there's a bunch of, there. the JPEG lossless is actually not. Okay, so they... I looked at it and they, they, they uh, anyway, so uh, look how many, you got 15,000 of these. I started reading through some of your M programs and MLX, so the combination of these two, I don't think I do have ever, no, oh, well, that's interesting, 10,000, 15, 20, yeah, I did. I've never done that, okay, I, I did control click on, let's see, oh, there it is. I, I clicked that one, and then I did control click on that, and it added them up for me. What a nice thing to learn. Okay, so here we got now 20,000, that's so tiny, 760, and there. Okay, so uh, so uh, you have that many um, uh, source code files in there for people doing different things, and you're relying on human read humans reading and manually uh manipulating those you know the compiler could do a bunch of that and the system as a whole could take these things and and, and scan and standardize the whole you talk about pretty print right that's for human eyeballs you need the equivalent of uh, machine pretty print like pull the data out not have anything left over that is not you know that's ambiguous or un, un thing. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff in here that's strictly for for display, and there's some of these crazy uh, formats. So you have about 200 or so of these things. That are actually, I'll tell you, you have 200. It's down here. It's 207 of these formats. And look at how many onesies are out there. So uh, that I if it were me, I would just go in there and say. Don't, don't do that. So look, you know, I found a few of them. Some of them I know where, where they come from. Uh, you almost might want to just stick them in a, in a miscellaneous folder and then hover them and go back to where they think. Your, so your file folder uh, tool and the other things can be a lot smarter. So there's like these gzips and you got, I, you know, I recognize a few of these, but they you, you could do a better job. So I was trying to yeah, do it. I'm coming to a, a way of documenting these things. I've done um, about 100 uh, large, the largest GitHub projects, so Python, that kind of thing, Chromium, those, those sorts of things, you know, and uh, trying to basically looking at can we condense that down to a reasonable size so somebody can glance at a project and know exactly what is there or browse it and know what's going on. All right, well, I don't know. I understand all this because I do it every day, but the, and uh, I, I've got gray areas too because some of these things are just horrifically difficult to do, uh, but they're not impossible. Uh, they, so uh, the DLL, I'm just glancing at things. You got all the DLLs and the EXEs and comms and, and LIBs and things like that in various forms. So those are those you can actually reverse engineer many of those, or at least index them and know what they have and what their dependencies are. Um, so there's a, quite a few scripts in here for humans, you know, and they're intended, they're text, and they're you know it's it's manual, you know, type and copy and paste and that kind of stuff, and we could do a lot, lot more. 
you sort of stuck a few of those into your here you know so I come in here and if I want to type something else uh, it's it's kind of cute but it's just in a sense it's an experiment because nobody else is using the same conventions but if they those conventions for editing were there now the big you know the notepad plus plus and the and the uh, let's see uh, visual studio code and all these development environments what they do is they try to get it down so everybody's using the same kind of an editor well, unfortunately the languages hadn't been combined so that's the uh, we shouldn't have you should be able to go and program I should be able to program in your environment and use JavaScript syntax and you, you would learn a lot from doing that okay what I'm talking about is the uh, the object handling in all is much more efficient in in there it has to be you have billions of users on the on the internet all using JavaScript and you guys have a have a few few hundred or few thousand people uh, working on this so you you know they're going to be better and they ha hammered out a few essential things that have to work well uh, uh, you know, globally now has it also gone crazy and, and they're doing you know many more things than they need to and people are wandering around and lost yeah that's also happening but the the whole of it is is that you could you could learn now what would you do you would, this is essentially this is a I'm using um, there other than you, you're forcing people to tell what the return values are uh, there now I've seen the public and private things in Delphi you know you go in there and you have to declare everything and, and also you have, there's um, and you know or these are public and private functions and C all of, all of those kinds of things the, they're fine, but they, if you go through the history of them, they're, it's the ones that are sort of disappearing do because they don't, you know, humans don't need to be memorizing all these things and typing and getting the exact syntax and then getting an error while your syntax is wrong. You guys are still doing it. You're still saying, oh, there's something wrong on this line. I don't think, think. but you could just say, look, I'll highlight everything in there and, and help you or catch it as you do it do line by line I I know so many different ways you can do it I can't simplify it for you but the um, if you if you um, used a JavaScript syntax uh, and I'm talking about particularly object creation and thing um, and if you clarify okay you guys by higgledy piggledy started adding a bunch of vector and matrix things and you overdid it and now you have so much embedded in that it's gotten you know it's super elaborated well you can do this or you can do that but it gets down to basically format management object type management and you guys have a lot of that that's just kind of everybody knows it and anybody who's really smart knows it well and memorized it all and can rattle it off real fast but your new users are going to be faced with a blizzard of things they haven't seen before and a lot of those are contrary to what they learn from other languages. You're for, there aren't many Fortran programmers like me. You know, that, that was my first language in C. And uh, so, um, but the, uh, there, I, let's see, what else can I say? Let me stop here. I, um, uh, I, I, I'm enjoying this, but I just, dozens of little things are just, you know, they're, um, I would like everybody on the internet to be, you know, uh, like again, that's about four and a half billion out there to be able to do these kinds of things routinely, and to, to uh, have. Now I can write them. I can sit down. I can write one of these in a couple hours, uh, at least. Uh, you know, the basics in there and, and get it in JavaScript. You know, then there's if I go look, I'm going to find twenty thousand groups that are already doing that and they say, here, we'll plot this for you and there. Um, but they're all recreating the same thing again. What a waste of human species to have to have everybody, you know, do this. Now, um, it gets horribly elaborate in there. Like I was looking at you, the way you do your dots, you know, you're shaped like a scattergram. Okay, I liked it. I found, figured out how you, you know, how you ask for a scattergram. So it, it's fairly decent. And I don't think, and 
how, how do I get this thing out of here? I can't. Okay, so there it is. Done. I have to. I can't. Where is? It should be there. That shouldn't be uh, uh, hidden like that still. Oh, I guess I have to. Do I have to stop? Huh. Okay, well, booey. All right, that's enough. Okay, so um, I don't know why I can't close that all the way. Why does it leave a blank? You see the, the bar in there? There must be a bar, something going on there. Why? <laughs> When I was telling you before, I, this is tiny. Okay, I have to be that close before that there. And my eyes are not always, right now I can actually see. Uh, later on, they'll, they'll, my eyes will go out. So anyway, that's so tiny that, you know, just if you don't have good eye, it was over here that I particularly had trouble finding where, where is your bar. And then I was sitting here, look how it slips back too easy. And I, okay, now I can grab it. Um, so uh, these, if you're gonna, it, you have space here, that's a file out there. If I click that, you should give me the file system data about it. I wanted to know how big was it, when was it created, who made it, when, you know, the, there. So it, you know, if you're gonna use this, you might as well use it. If you're not gonna use it, don't have it, that sort of thing, so. All right, let me stop here. Um, I just want to cram all this into your head as well, you know, there. Uh, I'm looking for help. I'd like, I'd like to rewrite the whole internet. I've got, I've got a pretty good way to go about it. Um, I'd like to get all the global data networks working together because I want to correlate them. I'm trying. To, there's a huge bunch of gravitational sensors out there now that that all are uncalibrated and they need, they need uh, networks to do that. So you can use ocean wave data to calibrate a or seismic data to calibrate a gravitational network and likewise the infrasound you can go and, and uh, compare it to the seismic actually the low frequency electromagnetic and low frequency gravitational and infrasound networks probably all have some degree of overlap a nice young lady uh, from russia a seismologist told me she was getting a bunch of magnetic noise in her in her uh, seismometers because they have metal parts in them so yeah so I started looking after that I spent this about three years I've been looking deeply at all the sensors how much uh, how many other signals are in there if you take a seismometer data set it has about 20 signals embedded in there you know the wind and the weather the barometric pressure a lot of stuff is actually also showing up in the in the traces for the um, three-axis seismometer they're they're basically accelerometers and any kind of shaking or you know uh, energy that flows in there a signal that flows in you know by whatever means is is uh, gets recorded and you know they call it noise in there but if you document it share it get it characterized then you can go back in and, and say look i'll, I'll you know, I've got weather data showing up in here. I'll pull it out as a separate stream. And I'll, so I've worked out how to get that done pretty cleanly. And I'm trying to set standards so that when you, you know, if you pull weather data out of a seismometer or, you you know, you look, maybe, you, you know, you can pick up a, a tsunami or something like that on a subsea uh, seismometer, the, those kinds of things. You should be able to, uh, you know, do that in a, in a fairly set, which means... These kinds of functions and, and things need to be standardized. So the models that are used, the data processing and steps in there, the statistical core of everything, all those functions are string to double. That has to be, you know, how many places is that used? How many people who write compilers or, or, or build libraries are all repeating the same thing? So uh, we shouldn't have that on the, on the world, you know. If all the people, there are people like me who go out there and they spend their lives worrying about things like string to double or, or you know, reading from the web or, or doing statistics. And if you get all those people working on it and say working together, that, so that's, that was a lot of the genesis for what I've talked about, the global communities. So, you know, there's a string to double global community. There's a web read global community. There's statistics, scattergram people. 
you know, and if they can get together and do it, regardless of what tools they happen to be using, to, that's the that's the part now. Oh, you know, I'm selling this package, and you know, and I've you know I've got to lock in my market, and they can't talk to anybody else, and I'll make proprietary formats, and they can't talk to anybody else. So many of those things need to be really be fixed. It's not legal in a sense on the internet to use proprietary formats. That's that's my general thing. Now, the flip side of that is everything that's used on the internet, everything that's out there that's created should be traceable back to who created it and how much effort did they put into it. If that's available, and I think it ultimately will be in many cases, then you can assign value. So if we do a, a um, uh, solar system colonization project to, you know, like everybody in the world, literally, who, everyone in the solar system uh, who wants to help, uh, you know, colonize the solar system, like the moon and, and Mars and that kind of thing. And what are the technologies needed? Who, who's involved? You know, who can help make that happen? If you go in there and work for free in a, you know, in a global community and everything that you do is tracked, and then you provide the core essential parts of something, you should be record, rewarded accordingly. So, you know, uh, you know, a group of 10 million gets together and they design a warp drive, which is going on right now, by the way. If you design, if you design that, um, then you should get, you should get uh, credit for part of it. And if they start sell, selling them at a trillion dollars a piece, or actually they're probably right now, they more like a hundred trillion each, then um, you would, you should get a little bit of money from that or some fame or whatever, you know, you need. If you get the world integrated as well as I think it could be with not too much trouble, then feeding people, giving them clean water, giving everybody a, a you know, a, a valuable job to do, um, you know, helping for all the parts there, we could manage our whole globe a lot more efficiently in the sense of doing it doing it well everywhere. I spent about a decade um, uh, working on international development. I set up the Central Economic and Social Database and I set up the Famine Early Warning System and those kinds of things. So uh, I, I, I got people together looking at modeling and simulation for all that related to economic and social models. So can we run countries better? Can we run whole continents better? Can we run the whole world better? Those, those are the, that's, that's what I did for about 30 years before I started the Internet Foundation. Well, I guess it gets back down to uh, how do I use this scatter function? You know, where do I specify the dot size? Well, can I use a triangle instead of a dot? I couldn't find out how to change the color intensity according to the value. I think that there's a, you know, basically uh, dots, each one um, the, on a se with a separate dimension to it or something of that nature. So anyway, I've got a lot to learn. All right. Thanks for listening.